And in America, the political theorist, too, is often merely a more systematic student of elections, of who voted for whom. As a professor or as a freelance intellectual, the political analyst is generally on the middle levels of power himself. He knows the top only by gossip and the bottom, if at all, only by research. So basically he's saying that, uh, you know, even in universities they don't teach you about where the real power lies because the, your professors and the people there are part of the middle level power themselves. They don't even understand the top, let alone know about it, and they're certainly not going to tell you anything about it. And that's why you have to read yourself, that's why you have to find out about things. And that's why we put these books out there and other stuff like that for you to be able to get informed if you don't know about these issues. Uh, the opportunities are there, it's your choice to act. Yeah, it looks like uh, quite a book and for some that was written in the 50s, uh, you're spot on with a lot of what he was saying. Yeah, I wonder what he would think of today in Sane Society. Um, I told you so. <laughs>
undermined um, through the democratic process or the lack thereof. Um, and then it was people like David Cobb and other members that called out the election fraud that they were seeing before their very eyes. And of course, none of it was ever really um, investigated properly, except for independent journalists like Greg Palast, who did great, uh, mm -hmm. great coverage on both of these elections. Yeah, and that's another thing. These uh, frauds and, and, and corruptions that are happening all over the place aren't reported. That's why we're here reporting this to you. And that's why it's our responsibility to turn away from these news sources and try and uh, either start our own or, you know, realize what the legitimate ones are and then do so actively. Otherwise, our election systems will continue to be fixed um, so long as we take whatever's being spoon-fed to us. Yep. And uh, so that's the relevance uh, to that day in history, or those days in history. And, uh, yeah, it shows the connection um, between the Democratic and Republican parties, how essentially they will give the elections away at a certain point when they uh, you know, need to cede power over. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, Clinton was in for eight years, and they had to cede to, to the Republicans and to Bush, and so Gore kind of gave a lackluster, as well as Kerry, a lackluster a campaign, didn't really fight for it. Yeah. And then it comes time for uh, Obama to come in after eight years of, of Bush's terribleness, and they put, you know, someone who's about to die like John McCain up there, mm -hmm. uh, you know, rather than a real candidate, um, and that's the way that these things work. They will always put basically, a, you know, dead... Uh, Zombies up there, <laughs> minions of the new world system, yeah. and that kind of thing. who are going to be okay with um, you know passing on their their election, passing not on. and not winning, basically. Yeah, basically being patsies uh, in these elections, that kind of thing. And um, it's interesting also to note that Al Gore, who pretty much didn't put up any much of a fight um, during the 2000 election, he became the leader of the global climate, human man-made climate change cult. So and maybe so that's that a bit of a trade-off for him or something. Yeah, and I mean, he was already, he's already been a member of what, the Club of Rome. Yeah, you know, Club which of Rome already, for a long time. Yep, preconceived the uh, entire notion of saying that the planet is in a crisis and that we are the enemy. Yep, the Club of Rome wrote a, a book back uh, in the 1960s called The First Global Revolution. And uh, it discussed how they were going to use the crisis of climate change and of humans uh, destroying the environment in order to basically gain uh, world government control over the planet. And uh, so yeah, pretty much uh, that outlines two years, uh, or two elections. Over were, eight years. Over eight years. Uh, two back-to-back -back elections that were blatantly rigged and hijacked right before our eyes. And uh, without much of a bat of the eye by the general public, uh, we just go on with our daily lives. Uh, when we're struggling to make do uh, with all these other things that are a result and a byproduct of our passive participants in the system and, and perpetuating of these uh, the false left-right paradigm. Yeah, the 2000 election is what got me into politics in the first place because uh, once I realized that it was a fraud that had gone on, or at least that things hadn't been legitimate and uh, we should probably have a re-election or a re-vote completely across the whole country. Mm. Um, and I asked you know, my father, I said, why aren't people freaking out? How come nothing's being done about this? And that's the question that got me into politics, is why people aren't freaking out about these issues. These are uh, extremely important and affect every single one of us. Um, well, thank you for being on our show. Um, quick introduction for our viewers out there. Mr. Cobb uh, graduated at, from the University of Houston Law in 93, privately practiced law there in Houston. Um, became involved in politics, ultimately running for president in 2004 as nominee for the Green Party. He now lives locally in Eureka, California with other members of uh, Democracy Unlimited Humboldt County, a grassroots strategy organization with a mission stating that it educates citizens about the illegitimate seizure of our authority to govern ourselves. We design and implement grassroots strategies that exercise democratic power over corporations and governments. We seek to create a truly democratic society by provoking a nonviolent popular uprising against corporate rule in Humboldt County that can serve as a model for other communities across the United States. I would say when I was a, 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 a undergraduate at the University of Houston, Jason, I got exposed to uh, foreign policy uh, and one of the ways that really came home to me was what was happening in South Africa. Uh, and the role that the multinational corporations had in propping up the apartheid regime there.